with apologies to Charles Dickens, thinking back on 2023, it was the worst of times and it was the even worser worst of times. It was the age of foolishness and then even more foolish foolishness. Remember January's vote-a-thon to elect a Speaker of the House? It took 15 rounds. Remember the Chinese surveillance balloon that floated over the United States for a whole week? But there were also the tragic mass shootings every month, including one at an elementary school in Nashville that still could not move the Tennessee legislature to do anything about the guns. But it did motivate them to expel two black representatives who stood with the white parents from the school demanding action. And then those representatives who were both named Justin were reelected back to the legislature the next month. There was the tragic comedy or comic tragedy that was George Santos, AKA Anthony DeVolder, AKA drag queen Kitara Ravash. By the way, you can now use the platform Cameo to hire George Santos DeVolder Gravash for $500 to record a one minute message to whomever you want. It's called Cameo, look it up. In June, a small submarine named Titan went diving for the Titanic and stayed. Also in June, the head of the military Wagner group, Evgeny Prigozhin, a war criminal's war criminal, led an abortive revolt against Vladimir Putin. And then in August, we were all shocked, shocked when his plane crashed. Twitter became X for no good reason. Abortion bans from six to 12 weeks of pregnancy were passed in various states, and voter initiatives to protect the right to abortion continued to pass even in states like Ohio. An anti-abortion judge in Texas tried to get rid of the FDA-approved abortifacent drug mefepristone in April, and the Supreme Court agreed to review the case in December. Every day, in 2023, you could laugh or cry or shake your head or do all three. And this was even before the Hamas rampage of October 7th of murder and arson and rape and kidnapping. In 2023, democracy continued under threat in many places, including in the United States. Although it's interesting if you ask MAGA Republicans, they also think democracy is under threat, but from us on the other side. We had a brutal war continuing in Ukraine and exploding in Israel and Gaza. 2022 began with a dozen Jewish hostages in a synagogue in Texas. 2023 ends with over 100 Jewish hostages in Gaza, if they're even still alive and Israel on trial for genocide at the International Court of Justice because of the tragic civilian casualties and destruction that result from Hamas hiding behind civilians and stealing relief supplies, and also because of the actual statements advocating war crimes made by members of the Israeli government and media, which were not instantly smacked down by Netanyahu. Jewish and Jewish-Israeli students on campus report feeling anywhere from uncertain to unsafe. And some protests have crossed the line from criticizing Israel to anti-Semitism. It was the worst of times. It was the even worser worst of times. It was the age of foolishness and then even more foolish foolishness. Did we learn anything in 2023? Was anything good? We discovered that AI programs like ChatGPT can produce reasonable answers to some questions as long as they plagiarize the correct source. And by the way, they might lead to the end of civilization. Some people who committed crimes were actually found guilty, like Sam Bankman Fried of the FTX cryptocurrency exchange and a former president 
of sexual abuse and tax fraud. Barbie and Oppenheimer both turned out to be good movies worth seeing. And maybe seeing both opened minds of people who would have only seen one but never seen the other one without the Barbenheimer effect. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. But overall, it seems like the U.S. economy ended 2023 with a relatively soft landing. High employment, higher interest rates, and lower inflation. Not that people understand that, of course, since the majority thinks that the end of inflation means that prices go back down. 70% of America thinks the economy is getting worse, even though 60% rate their own financial condition as good or excellent. Speaking of the 70s, 70% 70 of people today support legalizing marijuana. 70% think same-sex marriage should be legal. And 75% admit they are so attached to their smartphones they regularly use them while on the toilet. A pop superstar dated a football star and people lost their minds. But it seems like a reasonably healthy relationship, all things considered. TV producer OG Norman Lear died at age 101, one year and one week older than evil diplomacy OG Henry Kissinger. And Wheel of Fortune host Bob Barker died at age 99, very appropriately making it to just before 100 without going over. So maybe it wasn't the worst of the worst, the most foolish of the most foolish. After all, in 2024, we have a presidential election to look forward to. Guessing the future is more of an art than a science. You can stick to vague pronouncements that will likely be true, like fortune cookies or newspaper horoscopes. Once when I was in college, I wrote a set of joke horoscopes, and each one ended with, You'll have a lot of work to do and you won't get it all done. And the next week in one of my classes, someone said, I read your horoscopes you wrote. And, I, and when I read mine, I thought, that's so true. And then I read the others and they all ended that way. <laughs> so she realized I was sort of making fun of the horoscope itself. Well, so you can keep it vague in general, like a horoscope, or you can make specific claims that will run smack into reality. Now, one trick to making predictions for most people is you never go back to check what you predicted. But truth is important here at Kolkadash. And so I want to share with you my 10 predictions for 2023 that I shared at this service last year. Number one, Israel will have a political crisis that topples its coalition government or the Palestinian Authority will fall apart under pressure from Israel, Hamas, and its own people. I gave four to one odds on that. I also said the odds that the International Institute for Secular Humanistic Judaism runs its trip to secular Israel in December, 99%. Well, that 1% was terrible. The high holidays, I claim that Israel does not face an external existential threat. I was wrong about that, too. Survey says, eh -eh. It is possible, though, that this war with Hamas in Gaza will produce both results. Ultimately, the Israeli government will change. The surveys are unanimous in showing a different coalition would win if elections were held, and people are beginning to protest, demanding new elections. And... This crisis may yet undermine the Palestinian Authority as Israel refuses to pass along tax receipts and Hamas gains credibility on the street for fighting back. So it may eventually come to be the case, but it was not at all what I imagined. I get a zero for that prediction. Prediction number two. Kevin McCarthy will not make it to December 2023 as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Survey says, ding, ding, ding. Now, given the Freedom Caucus response to the latest budget deal his successor, Mike Johnson, has presented, maybe I should renew this prediction for 2024 and make it evergreen. Prediction number three. The movie Top Gun Maverick will be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture in 2023. And it was. And it seemed like Hollywood was back. Blockbuster movies, record turnout, massive strike 
with the writers and the actors over AI, over image and likeness. Eventually, the strike has been settled, but we'll see how long that lasts. Still, I was correct about Top Gun. Number four, if forgotten classified documents are found in a third Joe Biden location, and Jill Biden has another occurrence of skin cancer lesions in 2023, then Biden will not run for re-election. Neither one of those happened. Although Biden had a skin lesion removed in March. But that was an if prediction. If this happens then, so in theory, I could weasel out of it. Of course, there are still concerns about Joe Biden's age and Donald Trump's legal exposure for what happens in the elections, not to mention what he keeps saying. Both major candidates have disapproval rates well over 50%, and they also don't really face any viable challengers in their own parties. So it will be a rerun. Prediction number five, the Chicago White Sox will have a worse record than the Chicago Cubs. Results, 61 wins for the White Sox, 83 wins for the Cubs. Ding. Prediction number six, another synagogue in North America will be attacked while people are in it. At the time, I said the attacker could be a white nationalist, like the attacker in Pittsburgh, who, by the way, was convicted, finally, in 2023 on the fifth anniversary of that shooting. Or it could be a Muslim anti-Zionist, like the case in Coleyville, Texas, or it could be a black Hebrew Israelite, like the attack on a kosher school, uh, kosher restaurant and, uh, sorry, kosher grocery and uh, religious school, like in Jersey City. I did not predict that the attack on a synagogue could come from a progressive socialist angry about Gaza. There was, in fact, an attempted firebombing in New Jersey in January and a shooting attack that killed several at a synagogue in Jerusalem. There was a shooting at a synagogue in Tunisia in May. There was fire attacks in Berlin in October and in Montreal in November. I was technically wrong. I said these synagogues would be attacked with people in, in North America. The ones in North America, it was the middle of the night. It was somebody dropping a homemade Molotov cocktail and causing a little bit of burn damage. But it's close enough. I'll give it a sad ding for right enough that there were attacks on synagogues. And there may well be in 2024 as well. Number seven, I'm happy to be wrong. I said that COVID deaths would continue in America over 200,000 in 2023. In fact, the first week of 2023, there were 3,800 deaths a week in that week. And that would have added up times 52 to 197,000. But our rates of COVID death went down significantly because of high vaccination rates. In fact, among those over 65, around 95% of them are vaccinated. So COVID deaths went down. I'm happy I was wrong. The next one, I'm happy I was right. I said for the first time, renewable energy like solar, wind, and hydroelectric would produce more power in the U.S. than coal did. And it did happen that way. In fact, Nuclear power also produced more than coal. Coal production of power has gone down tremendously. But it's not all because of green, crunchy, renewable energy. It's because natural gas is cheaper. And a lot of coal-fired power plants were retired and were replaced by natural gas-fired power plants. So it's still a fossil fuel, just a different fossil fuel. But globally, renewables did grow more than 50% from 2022 through 2023, and that's progress in the right direction. Prediction number nine, I said that former President Donald Trump will finally be indicted for something. Ding times four. And finally, I predicted that the sun would rise in the east and set in the west. Chicago weather would remain unpredictable. The summer would be hot and the winter would be cold. And Kol Hadash would continue to provide support, learning, inspiration, and connection. With our weather this weekend and this online turnout, I would say that all of that stayed true. That's a decent result. Of those 10, I'd say three mostly wrong, six mostly correct, 
and maybe a push here or there. So now I have to make my calls for 2024. I'm not going to push my luck with 10 this time. Let me keep it to four. And I'm not going to talk about sports or movies. First prediction. I predict that Israel will be forced to stop fighting in Gaza before it is satisfied that Hamas is fully destroyed. It may have been an unrealistic goal to start, to want to destroy Hamas, because Hamas is as much an idea as it is a force, and there are just too many civilians standing between the IDF and Hamas, whether Hamas is hiding behind them or what. You know, they fled to the south when Israel invaded the north, but where are they going to go now? You're beginning to hear Jewish voices pushing for a ceasefire beyond the far left and the anti-Zionists who started on October 8th. You see American patience and international support is beginning to wane given all these civilian casualties and the destruction being caused. And there are concerns that an ongoing conflict will eventually spark a broader war. You see what happened with the Houthis in Yemen and what's beginning to simmer closer to a boil with Hezbollah in the north of Israel and Lebanon. Where are those refugees in Palestine, in Gaza, going to go like they fled to the south? Those pictures from northern Gaza, they look like Berlin in 1945. But that's the result of a total war against an implacable and fanatical enemy who cares more about the cause than civilian lives. Germany could have unconditionally surrendered earlier, but they would never. Hamas could have talked surrender, they could have talked ceasefire, they could have stopped shooting rockets, they could have returned hostages. There are steps that could have been taken to de-escalate. They haven't been, and so more bombs, more destruction, more death. The difference between now and 1945, do we have the stomach in 2023 to do what happened in 1945 in Dresden and Hiroshima and Tokyo? To be honest, I hope we don't. And so I hope that Israel will have to stop because the deaths continue. Second prediction. When the fighting stops in Gaza, the explicit anti-Semitism we've been seeing will decline, but there'll be a lot of hard questions left to answer. What really happened on these college campuses when push came to shove, and why? Why did the regime of controlling campus speech to protect minorities not protect Jews? How do American Jews relate to Israel, as Israel is often, maybe increasingly, not what American Jews imagine it to be or want it to be? Between American, uh, sorry, between Republican isolationism, Biden's strong support for Israel, along with Christian evangelicals, and progressive solidarity with Palestinians, where does the Jewish community feel safest? Prediction number three. This American election season is going to be terrible. Is there any reason to think it won't be? We know that Biden is not at his historical best. We know that Trump has shown he can always get worse. We know that the media and social media and deep fakes and conspiracy thinking will only be messier, whether or not TikTok really is a Chinese plot. And we know that the radicalism of gerrymandering has made compromise and governance almost impossible. Add in waves of undocumented immigration that thanks to mass busing is now roiling blue cities like Chicago, as well as red border states. You can see the tensions happening in city council meetings, even in Chicago. Add in the increased skepticism of and fear for democracy on both sides of the aisle. Add in anger, and fear, and more anger. This election is going to be messy, no matter how many next shoes drop. Trials, convictions, being thrown off the ballot, impeachments, protests, it's all coming, and it's going to be a mess. I'm not going to call a winner on this one, because we will all be losers. And one last prediction. 
there will always be reason for joy and for hope. If you look hard enough. I get a magazine called The Week. It's a nice digest of a variety of political and um, philosophical perspectives on contemporary issues. And they have a section every week called, It Wasn't All Bad. And they bring stories of people doing nice things for other people and circumstances turning out for the best and groups cooperating together to do something wonderful. Every year sees amazing cultural creations on the page and on screens, marvelous books, wonderful movies, amazing music. Scientific progress pushes forward. Just this last year, there was a new stem, uh, sorry, stem cell treatment for diabetes that may in the long run eliminate the need for insulin shots. One person on this stem cell treatment hadn't had insulin shots in 15 months, able to control their diabetes in a new way. There will be concerts and art exhibitions. There will be good laws passed. There will be progress made. In fact, one of the best human inventions of all time is the idea of progress. Not that things are always the way they were meant to be, or that they will always stay this way, that there is nothing new under the sun, as Ecclesiastes claimed, that the world is stasis and static and stagnant, that you are cast into a caste in which you are condemned to live your entire life, that fate has decided what will happen to you. The idea of progress, that my life and that our lives are in our hands to make better, that is the eternal flame of human hope. As bad as 2023 may have been, 2023 came to an end and a new year has dawned. Thank goodness.